If you wanna be a great CrossFit athlete, you have to be a great weightlifter too. Today, we're gonna to be analyzing the technique of two absolute goats of the CrossFit world, Rich Fronin and Matt Fraser. Both these blokes have multiple times won the CrossFit Games, and in today's session, we're gonna be analyzing their snatches at 305 pounds. Regardless of whether you're a CrossFit or a weightlifter, this is serious snatching, and there's a lot of lessons to be learned from both of these blokes. So if you stick with me for this video, I'm gonna be teaching you exactly what I see in their Olympic lifts and how you can start to implement this into your snatch teak. And of course, become a better weightlifter, become a better crossfitter. So let's get stuck straight into this analysis. We're gonna be looking at Rich Fronin. The first things I notice is what he does in this start position. So you'll see as soon as he sets up to the bar, he kind of sits back on it. Now, I don't like this, okay, when someone's doing this in their setup position, because this generally promotes you to move forward or to stick the weight in your toes and let the bum shoot up early in the lift, which is something that we see happen straight away from Rich. As soon as he starts pulling, his bum lifts up. Now, although you'll see some elite level weightlifters utilize this technique, the thing that you'll notice when they do do it is the head doesn't move forward. Rich's does a little bit, and this is a submaximal lift. You normally would see a few technique breakdowns, but as a result of this movement forward and his bum coming up, that's why we see at this point how his arms are kind of bent like so. And then as he progresses past the knee, you can see from the shadow on his thigh, the bar is away from him, okay? If the bar's away from you and the legs are kind of too straight at this point, this is what increases the likelihood of the arms having to bend. The reason why they're bending is because he's trying to get the bar back closer to his center of gravity so that when he strikes up through the middle, he can actually utilize his legs. However, you're fighting a losing battle when this happens. And this is ultimately why through the middle phase of lift, when Rich actually makes contact and extends from say here, we're back in contact with the hip. If you look at the height on the bar at this point, okay, to when he hits his top extension position, there's not a great deal of distance gained, okay, or height gained on the bar at this point. What we wanna see, and one, one of the things you'll see in comparison to when we look at mats, is how much more lift there is through the middle phase of the lift because of how close he keeps it. As Rich comes into the receiving position, his shoulders have gone back behind the bar, a little bit at the top, and his hands are now getting higher than his elbows, okay? So during the transition, we wanna try and keep elbows as high as we can through the middle so that the bar stays close to the body, but also so the transition into the lockout is smoother. So I'll progress through this video anyway. Change of camera angle. As we come into the catch position, you'll notice that Rich's first contact point is with the toes, okay? Ideally, when we come into the receiving position, we'd be landing with flat feet. This is gonna make you a lot more solid into the receiving position, but it's kind of highlighted a little bit more from this angle, the distance between him and the bar as he's coming down into his receive position. As I said, there wasn't great amount of maximal height created through extension, which is why he's just sneaking underneath this bar into the receiving position. And you can see here that the bar is a little bit out in front of him. As he comes into his receiving position, there's a lot of things that I do like. One thing that you'll see is the incredible mobility that Rich Fronin has here. He's created plenty of room for his feet to be wide enough for his hips to sit between the ankles. This is elite level bottom position in my opinion. Even in flat shoes, he's still managing to keep his knees out very well and his torso upright in this position, which is amazing. And that's why he gets away with this very well in the bottom position, okay? As he catches, you'll notice how he's keeping the wrists sat back, which is great for his lockout stability and strength. And he's staying externally rotated here through the shoulders and through the elbows, which is absolutely brilliant. Eyes are staying up, which really helps keep the chest up, ultimately resulting them for him in this lift to stand up really well utilizing the legs. So an amazing lift, especially to do it in front of that crowd. Couple of things that I'd probably suggest that would help Rich be a little bit more consistent, potentially maximally use his legs a little bit better, would just be to see a slightly different start position. Instead of starting from the bottom up to get into the set position, start from the top down. What I mean by that is sticking the bum up in the air first and locking down into the set position. This creates a stretch reflex and will also help you create tension in the setup position, which makes it easier for you to utilize the legs, keep the arms hanging loose, and ultimately keep the bar nice and close through this middle phase of the lift that we're seeing here, whilst the arms are hanging loose. Loose arms, 
means maximal use of legs without the upper body taking over in the lift. But all in all, fairly solid and a great 305 snatch. But one thing I wanna do now is show you Matt Fraser's snap. You have to remember that Matt Fraser was an incredible Olympic weightlifter before he moved to CrossFit. And what I always say when it comes to being a great CrossFit athlete, if you can master the Olympic weightlifting first, it makes it much easier for you to get better at barbell cycling and being an all-round better barbell specialist when it comes to CrossFit. And that definitely showed true with Matt Fraser's transition from, from weightlifting to CrossFit. You'll see what I'm saying now about what Matt's doing when he's setting from the top down so you see how his bum stays high and he locks down into set position this really enables him to utilize the legs really well in the first phase of the lift and maintain a good consistent angle with the back while the arms are hanging loose at this point that's something that we see really nice about Matt's lift. His feet stay planted fairly well to the knee, but as he comes past the knee, one thing you'll notice is a slight lift of the of the toes, okay? So the weight's now in the heels a little bit. This can cause sometimes for the bar during extension to drift away very slightly out in front, and we'll see if that happens as we progress through Matt's lift. Ultimately though, you see the difference now at this point between Matt and between Rich. If I could show you at this point, you see how straight Rich's legs are here versus when we come back to Matt's, you'll see how his are a lot more bent at this point. Bent legs at this point means maximal force, just like you would do if you were jumping. If your legs are bent, you're gonna jump much higher than if you're trying to jump with straight legs. As we progress through this, Matt keeps his arms hanging nice and loose and you'll see how well the bar stays in contact with the body as it hits mid to upper thigh all the way into the hip crease. Now, ultimately you'll see as Matt comes off flat feet here, his shoulders are over the bar, which is absolutely amazing. His arms are still hanging loose. And now when he extends, do you see how much the height and the bar changes? So we'll see from this point when he first makes contact with the hip, which is here, height of the bar. Boom, 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 bang. Huge amount of height gained during this middle phase of the lift. This is what ultimately gives Matt the time to move into his receiving position and catch nice and tight. So this is a really efficient turnover into the catch position. What you'll also notice in difference between Matt and Rich is how much closer Matt keeps the bar through his transition and how he keeps his elbows higher than the hands at this point, which causes a great turnover into the receiving position. Now, as a result, like I said earlier, of that little bit of movement from heel to toe through the middle, you can see as Matt comes into his receive, he has to check the weight a little bit. So this is where he kind of catched in the bottom, stabilizes before he stands up. In my opinion, he's having to do this because of potentially that little shift of heel to toe through the middle, which has caused the bar to be a little bit out in front. And we can kind of see that instability there. But nonetheless, one thing that you'll notice similar between Rich and Matt is also amazing mobility. He's got nice wide movement into his receiving position. And this is ultimately, again, why he manages to keep his torso so upright here. And he's also got very similar external rotation here, the shoulder and the elbow, which is gonna help his lockout, okay? When we're externally rotating here and letting the wrist sit back at this point, it gives you a much more stable lockout position versus if the shoulder's internally rotating and the wrist is staying stacked. Although you, again, you will see some elite athletes doing this, it requires you to actually drop the chest and rely on the muscles in the mid to upper back to be extremely strong, as well as great shoulder mobility to hold this position. I would rather rely on letting the legs do the work, which is much easier to do when you stay a little bit more upright and stay externally rotated. Again, an awesome catch position here for Matt as he stands out. 305, absolutely nailed. He does in this video actually go for 315, and we'll see if there's any similarities here, particularly between 315. If anything, on the 315, Matt stays planted better with the feet in this point, which is what I touched on earlier, and manages to stay over the bar and get very good extension on this one also, which is why, in my opinion, from a technical standpoint, the 315 that he did was actually better than the 305, which is why, again, he managed to stand out and make another solid lift. So I think all said and done, the lessons that you can take away from both Rich and Matt is Matt Fraser is probably a bit more of a goat when it comes to Olympic weightlifting, but he's had a lot more practice than Rich. 
Um, from a technical standpoint, the difference is in the setup position. Um, Matt going from the top down to create better tension made him much more solid from the floor and also hold a better position through the middle as a result of this. Rich starting from the bottom up got pulled out of position. A lot of the weight went in the upper body, which affected maximum height gained of the bar, which means that no matter even if he's stronger than Matt per se, he's not going to be able to be as efficient with the strength that he has versus Matt being potentially a little bit weaker is maximally using the strength that he has because he's letting the legs do the work through the middle phase of the lift. I think the other thing that you see that plays true for both of these athletes is how good their mobility is. Having great mobility means that you don't need to get the bar as high in order to get into your receiving position and be able to stand up with it. So again, that was something that was really important for both of these athletes to be really good at snatching. The final thing that I want to touch on that stood true with both of these athletes was how good their lockout um, strength and stability was as a result of having an upright torso position, keeping external rotation and keeping the wrist back. The only thing that I would have touched on probably for Matt that would have helped him um, be a little bit more efficient was like I say, staying on flat feet a little bit better through the middle phase of lift, but also getting in the habit of standing straight up out the hole. You waste a lot of energy when you have to sit in the bottom position. If you relax at all in that bottom position, it can be the result. It can result in you actually having to drop the bar or drop it forward um, when it's a super heavy weight. Whereas if you can kind of get in the habit of standing straight up at the bottom, you're going to use that momentum from the receive position to stand straight up. Going to be a lot more efficient, especially if he was cycling or had to do multiple reps at a heavy lift. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this analysis of two absolutely incredible CrossFit athletes. And I think, like I said, it stands true. You have to be an amazing weightlifter if you want to be an amazing CrossFit athlete too. If you joined this analysis and you want me to help you with your Olympic weightlifting or even give you analysis, I'm going to put a little link below this video where you can find out a little bit more about what I do from a teaching and education standpoint in the lifting zone. And also go ahead and book a call with me to discuss your Olympic weightlifting so I can build you out a custom program and you can start smashing your Olympic weightlifting too. Big love guys. Make sure you share this with your crew.